we have two Excel files, and we need to import them into a pivot table in a different workbook. Now for our project, we only have two files, and we're not going to get any new files. Now that's important because we're going to use a slightly different method than we used back in MSPTDA video number four. In that video, we had multiple Excel files, and we expected to get more later. Now in that video, we used the great get data from file from folder, but that method is more complicated than we need if we only have two files. Now here's one of the Excel files and our data set. We have City of Oakland Council District, Latitude, Longitude, Description, and Date. And these are records for potholes that were requested but not resolved. Now our end result is this. For a particular district, we can see potholes by year and month. And when we go from district to district, there are still a lot of potholes unresolved from almost 10 years ago. Now, actually, the re end result is not as important as getting this data into another Excel workbook and building that pivot table. Now, this is one of them, and we could definitely copy and paste both of these tables into a single table on a sheet in the other workbook. But then when we make our pivot table, the data is stored in the pivot table cache a second time in that same workbook. So it makes more sense to keep the data in those two files and use Power Query to import them, append them into a single table and then load it directly to the pivot table cache. In our destination file, we go to the Data Ribbon tab, Get and Transform Group, Get Data Dropdown, From File, and there's From Workbook. We navigate to our first file, and we double click. Anytime there are multiple objects in our source file, we'll see the Navigator window. Now, we have only one sheet in each workbook. When we select that and click Transform Data, it builds the steps over here to import that single worksheet object. If we go to Source, we can see that File Path is built in. And in the Navigation step, it got that one object from that Excel file. Then it promoted headers and changed type. Now, change type means what type of data we have in the column. In Power Query, you have to be explicit. There's a little icon in the upper left. Right here, if I click this, I can see that is date. And what's great about Power Query is it forces you to have data types. For example, in an Excel sheet, if we had a date column and it wasn't a date, in a pivot table, we wouldn't be able to group by date. This is text. This is decimal. So it looks like the automatic date types are perfect. The other thing that's important about date types is this date start column, in order for it to be combined or appended with the other date start column, they both have to have the same data type and they have to have the same name. So when you're importing the table, if there's inconsistencies, you can, for example, double click and rename it, and it will add a new step, or simply click this and select the right data type. All of our names and data types are looking good. The name we have is fine. Now we go up to Close and Load, Close and Load 2, and we want only create a connection. We do not want to load this yet as a table, into the pivot table or data model. When we use only create a connection, we make a connection to the Excel file sheet, which we can use later in our append. We click OK. We can see our first connection query is there. Now we repeat the steps from workbook, double click the second file, select the sheet, transform data, go up to close and load, close and load to, only create a connection. Click OK. Once we have queries, then we can append. Back up to get data, all the way down to combine and append. We have two tables, but we could do this with three or more. First table will be our 2011 to 16. The second one, 17 to 20. Click OK. And now we have our five columns with all the data from both tables. We're going to name this query something smart. Now we can close and load, close and load two. And this is where we want to load it directly to the pivot table cache. We'll put it on a new worksheet. Click OK. I'm going to name this sheet 
And now there are all the columns from our pivot table cache. We're going to start by dragging date down to rows. We see it groups. We're going to drag quarters off. We want to drag date start over to columns. In the pivot table, I want to rename this months and enter. Now, it doesn't matter which field we drag when we're counting, because a cross tab pivot table simply counts how many times there was a particular year and month. I'm going to drag description, which is a text field, and that will default to count. Immediately, I'm going to come up here and rename the calculation. Something like count open potholes. That gives us count of open potholes by year and month. Now with a cell in the pivot table selected, we go up to pivot table, analyze, filter group, and there's insert slicer. We want council district. Click OK. We can move it, resize it. Up in slicer ribbon tab, we can add two columns. And now we can slice and see each particular district. Whoa, not many there. Wow, look at that. Here in 2013, January, there's still one pothole that is still an open case. In District CCD4, it looks like in 2013, January, there are 20. Now the slicer is great because we can simply select a district, and there's the count of open potholes. But what if we wanted each one of these districts, the same exact pivot table, each on a different sheet? This is a trick that goes way back in pivot table history. So this is your bonus trick. Now we click back in the pivot table, and it's council that we have in our slicer. But if we drag it down to filters, and very importantly, I want to clear all the filters. If we have a field in filter and it says all, there's a button up in pivot table analyze, pivot table group, option drop down, and there it is, show report filter pages. When I click this, it creates one new pivot table, each on a new sheet for every one of the districts. So when I click, it asks me, because sometimes we have many filters here, we only have one. So I simply click OK and watch what happens down here. Just like that, I get all the districts. Now, some of the potholes had no districts, so I'm going to name this. And as I go to each sheet, that is beautiful. How fast and easy is that? All right, so we saw a couple of pivot table tricks at the end. We saw how to use Power Query to connect to two Excel files, then append them into a single table, and then load it straight to the pivot table cache. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. And if you want to see how to import multiple files, and then when you get new ones later refresh, check out this video. Want to see how to import text files? Here's a video.